Hello friends, this video on organisms and their surroundings part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now not only reproduction, there is another important trait which is shown by all living organisms that is movement. All living organisms can move. Now when you talk about movements, a lot of things come to our mind. We are able to walk, we can run, we can jump. In fact, the animals, different animals have different movements. If you look at a cheetah, it can run really, really fast. Look at a frog, it can jump and hop. Look at a bird, it can fly. Fishes can swim. Babies, they crawl. So all are different types of movements. You look at the lizard. So how does it walk? It, it, it doesn't walk or run. It kind of uh, crawls, you can say, or it kind of creeps over the wall. So if you look at organisms like snakes, they slither. So different types of organisms, be it animals, insects, birds, snakes, human beings, they all show different types of movements. Some of them can move from one place to another. Some of them can fly from one place to another and so on. Now in a similar way, plants also show movements. Now they might not move as such like an animal from one place to another but when you look at the parts of the plants they do show movement for example if if you have ever noticed that uh, when especially the insectivorous plants the plants which feed on insects the pitcher plant so this is how a pitcher plant looks like so here when an insect comes near the plant you know what happens this lead of the plant it tends to close and the insect gets captured inside and that's how the plant eats up that insect. So what was this movement? This movement was shown by the plants. In fact, there are a lot of other plants which feeds on insects. So they show movements. You think of touch me not plant. You touch it and the plant shows movement. So even plant shows movement, but of course, movements in plants are quite limited when compared to animals. Now, when you look at human beings, you see that movements can also be of various types. There are different parts of your, our body which show different types of movements. When you look at the fingers, the fingers can be, you know, bent. Again, when you look at your legs, you can move it or you can bend it from your knees. While performing exercise, you move your waist. So you can move your bodies from all those parts where you have joints. Now we have learned about joints in one of our previous lessons. So where we had discussed about body movements in detail. So we see that movements in different organisms can happen in different ways. Now an interesting question that might come to your mind is, can non-living things also show any characteristics of life? Now when we talk about movements, a lot of you might feel that why is it that only human beings can move or only insects can move? Even buses and cars do move. But we say that they are not living. But they are showing characteristics of life. So let us try to analyze this. Now when you look at a non-living thing like a bus, what do you see? It moves from one place to another. But that doesn't mean that it is a living thing. Why? If this can also move, so it should also be a living thing. But that, that doesn't hold true. That's because maybe this bus satisfies one criteria of life. That is, it can move. But when you try to compare the other characteristics of a life, like does the bus respire? No. Does the bus eat food? Not really. Does the bus reproduce? No. So it is not only one characteristic that will decide whether an object is living or not living. A set of characters will decide whether it is living or not living. Now, similarly, when you look at the clock, the hands of the clock, they continuously move. So they also show movement. But the clock as a whole is not a living thing. Think of the sprouts. Now when you put water into them, what happens? The sprouts, they are, they are nothing but the seeds. So they have the ability to give rise to a new plant. But the moment you provide favorable condition, that is you provide some water, you provide some light and what happens? It starts growing and it gives rise to a new plant. So it has the ability to give rise to life. But for that, you need to provide suitable conditions. So, you know, whenever you have to decide whether a particular object is living or non-living, you will have to judge on all the characters rather than one or two characters. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience.
Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.